Astra Abyss.
Taki Ito? Hmm, oh yeah. I heard about that whole thing. I'm sure it must have been a mix-up on the Tenryo Commission's end. He could never do anything so dastardly. Huh? How can you be so sure? Is he really as trustworthy as all that? <laughs> no, perhaps you misunderstand me. When I said he could never do anything dastardly, I meant... He literally doesn't have what it takes. Mm, maybe a story will explain it better. So, he used to spend a lot of time playing rock, paper, scissors and hide and seek with the kids on the streets. Kids, being kids, aren't exactly the most difficult to outsmart. I'm sure you can see what I'm getting at here. He used to lose all the time, sometimes catastrophically. <laughs> on purpose though! Right? No, not at all. The one time I saw him win, he started jumping around and yelling, I won! I finally won! I'm unbeatable! And so on. Then he took the kid's candy as his prize and ate it right there in front of him. Ugh, that's just plain wrong. He did take it way too far that time. The poor kid started crying, so... I stepped in and gave Ito a scolding. He was pretty quick to admit that he was fully in the wrong, and it wasn't long before the kid had stopped crying and was laughing and playing again as if nothing had ever happened. In fact, the children quite like playing with him because he's always serious about the stakes and never throws a game on purpose. So, I suppose what I'm trying to say is, is a guy who can't even beat kids at a children's game really gonna be capable of these kinds of diabolical deeds? Huh. He doesn't sound like a bad guy at all. In fact, he kind of sounds like a man of integrity. Yes, my thoughts exactly. Still, the Tenryo Commission's evidence against him is supposed to be irrefutable. So, I'm not trying to condone his actions or anything. If he really has messed up big time, then he should face the consequences just like anyone else. Thanks for the info! We'll keep asking around! Taki Ito. <laughs> of course I know him. We've been trying to apprehend him recently. We know he's already left Inazuma City, but with no clues to follow, we have no choice but to commission others for help, including the Adventurers Guild. Catherine says that our Taki Ito hasn't done anything seriously bad before, so it seems pretty strange. Paimon's curious. Is there any evidence of all this stuff he's accused of? Yes, of course. Otherwise, we'd never have put so many people on the case. For starters, most thieves will try to devise a way to conceal their identity. But for an Oni, the horns are a dead giveaway. I mean, the whole city could have recognized it was him.
At first, he was just one of our suspects, but when we went to investigate, he personally confessed to everything and started trying to provoke the officers. What's most frustrating is that he then managed to escape along with his entire gang. He must have been planning the whole thing right from the start. Of course he did. Whether material or psychological, there is plenty of evidence either way. He's never had a mora to his name his entire life, and he's never kept down a real job. Word is that he also takes care of someone in his gang, and that the burden of it takes quite the toll on him. After scrounging for a living all these years, maybe he thought that being the bad guy would be an easier ride. As for his psychological motives, it's a bit embarrassing to talk about, but we... <clears throat> confiscated his vision during the Vision Hunt Decree. At the time, Arataki Ito put up quite a fight. It took a huge amount of manpower and resources, and in the end we had to enlist the help of Kujo Sara to finally secure his vision. The Vision Hunt was a mistake, but we never expected that he would go to such extreme lengths to take revenge on us. He does sound a little unstable, just like people have been saying. If the two of you are able to capture Arataki Ito, please bring him straight here. We'll handle him from there. Thanks for all the info. Have we really run out of exciting cases? Company, fall in! Oh. Is there anything special? Uh, Ito? Yeah, I've heard of the guy. Word is, he did something monumentally stupid, then ran off before they could catch him. And to be completely honest, I was a little surprised when I first heard it. Okay, well, I mean, not that surprised. Wait, you mean he already had a bad reputation? No, not exactly. <coughs> He's just very overbearing in everything he does. Big and brash and always making a ruckus. So, on the one hand, he's a larger-than-life kind of guy. But on the other hand... He's emotionally volatile. When he's in a good mood, he's as high as a kite. But when he gets upset, he gets completely enraged. I don't personally see him as a bad guy, but I guess I wouldn't put it past him get all riled up and lose control. Hmm... You know, I'm afraid that I'm not too sure myself. <coughs> I keep a pretty good eye on what's happening in the city, and as far as I can tell, he just idles the days away. When someone asks for it, he's willing to lend a helping hand, but other than that, he's just out making a scene with the kids on the street or his gang. <sighs> if I had to guess, his lack of income finally drove him to do something more drastic to make ends meet. Is it? Weird. I'm afraid that I don't have much else to tell you. He tends to spend his time with people a little more lively than myself. Perhaps you could try asking around some more. Okay, thanks! Hmm. Too bad we still don't know where he could have run off to. We already got word on the street, so maybe it's time to talk to a real specialist. That there's a detective agency here in Inazuma. Maybe we can try asking there. The new book from Yon Publishing House. Welcome to Bantan Sanga Detective Agency. What will you have me solve? Oh, him again. Sure, I have answers. We've already done some investigating for the Tenryo Commission. But first, do you have enough Moro to cover the fee? I've heard all about your travels. 
After everything you've been through, I'm sure you understand the way these sorts of things work. Uh, how much more are we talking? A one-off payment of 397,000 mora, up front. Plus a further 5% of your Adventures Guild remuneration as my commission, if Arataki Ito is successfully caught and brought to justice. Whoa! That's crazy expensive! How did you even come up with a price that high? <laughs> Hold on. I wasn't finished. It just so happens the initial fee has already been paid in full by the Tenryo Commission. All you'll need to pay is the small commission fee. And, as for that amount, I'll settle things with the Adventures Guild once we have Ito. So... From the way I see it, you guys are getting a pretty nice deal. Now then, to give you the full picture in this case, we must first recount a well-known Inazuman fairy tale. A long, long time ago, in a village lost to time, there lived a crimson oni and a blue oni. They were the best of friends. The Crimson Oni looked fierce, but was gentle like the humans. The Blue Oni looked human, but was reclusive, like an Oni. The Crimson Oni wished to befriend the humans, but they were scared and threw beans at him whenever he came near. So the Blue Oni said to the Crimson Oni, Aka! I'll cause trouble in the village. You'll come and stop me. Then the humans will accept you. As planned, the Crimson Oni chased the Blue Oni away. The Crimson Oni's deeds spread throughout the land, and people finally accepted him. But when the Crimson Oni went to tell the Blue Oni the good news, he was gone and left only a letter behind. I went traveling. Don't come find me, or they'll treat you as a naughty little Oni. But don't worry about me. No matter where I go, we'll always be friends. Huh? That's it? What about the little blue Oni? Whatever happened to him? I suppose the blue Oni simply disappeared, never to be seen again. Only the crimson Oni remain now. Of course it does. Otherwise, I wouldn't go through all the trouble of telling it. One interpretation is that the story is actually broadly based on historical events and that Arataki Ito is, in fact, a descendant of the Crimson Oni. What I'm trying to tell you is that the Oni have sacrificed a lot in the past in order to finally integrate themselves into human society. But there are still some volatile personality traits in the Oni bloodline. Every generation of Oni inherits these traits. So while Arataki Ito has never been known to commit a wrongful act in the past, can we ever completely rule out the possibility of him one day allowing this side of him to take over? But how could he do that? After the blue Oni's sacrifice? That would be such a betrayal! That's a very old story. Nobody knows how long it's been since the blue Oni disappeared. We can only assume that they have long since died out, in which case, it would be quite a stretch to say it still counts as a betrayal at this point. Besides, the suspect has already confessed. What is there left to discuss? According to my investigation, he was headed southwest. I would bet he's already made it to Yashiori Island by now. The Tenryo Commission is unable to enter territory controlled by Songonomia troops. No doubt that's the reason Arataki Ito chose to flee in that direction. Don't mention it. I'm just doing my duty. Wait! Paimon still has a question. If Arataki Ito has given in to his bad side, won't that mean he's extra mean and violent now? I could only assume so. Judging from his previous bouts, he is a skilled fighter with a lot of brute strength. Whether or not you'll be able to handle him, that I do not know. Ah, yes. Now that you mention it, I seem to recall that Arataki Ito is allergic to beans. In fact, all Oni will avoid beans, but especially Ito. 
I heard that just touching a bean is enough to incapacitate him. If you could weaken him a bit by triggering his allergies, perhaps you'd have better luck subduing him. Right! Knowing our target's weakness will make things a whole lot easier! It just so happens that I have a bag of beans right here. I was planning to use them to make some porridge, but I think you will find a better use for them. Of course, I will charge the Adventurer's Guild a fair and reasonable rate for the beans. Sneaky! But also, thanks! Let's head to Yashiori Island and start looking for Ito! Please speak to President Song. I'm just a help. Welcome to Bonton Sango Detective Agency. What will you have me solve? The Welcome fighting has ceased Sanger for now. Commence physical training! The tail's getting wet. Let's find a fire and dry off.
has a vision, why not see if you can track him down using elemental sight? this way. Perfect. Let's try the beans Detective Sango gave us. It'll save a lot of hassle if we can avoid D -d don't don't be alarmed. It's just my uh, uh my allergies acting up. I've got it under control. It's all right. I got this. I just 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 gotta tough it out. <laughs> just, I, I can take it. I can take it. <laughs> I gotta catch my breath here. Whatever it is you want, it's gonna have to wait. I need a moment. Need a moment. Woo, that's, that's better. That sure took a lot out of me though. Hey, why'd you have to be so mean, huh? Surprise attacking me like that. Oh, I get it. So you're here to bring me in. How in the world did you find me all the way out here? Huh, well, whatever. If you think I'm going back with you, you can forget it. I'd walk away if I were you. I pack a mean punch, you know. I don't want to hurt any regular folks like you. That's pretty big cat considering all the beans we have. 
Yep, that's right. Me. All by myself. Nobody else. As boss of the Arataki gang, I gotta nab a little food and drink when we're running low. That's only natural, right? Yeah, but nabbing people? That's taking it a bit far, don't you think? Uh, not when their families will pay good mora to see them again. Easy pickings. And the extra mora means I can, uh, uh, give some to my gang to spend on themselves. <laughs> Hey, what's with all the questions? Like I said, I'm not going back with you, so stop wasting everybody's time. No way, mister! We've accepted a commission to bring you back! What did you say, little one? Go on, say it to my face. Uh, w well, mostly she took a commission to bring you back. Looks like you aren't gonna let this drop. In that case, we... Uncle Ito! Uh, don't run now. Careful or you'll fall. What's taking you so long? You said we were gonna have a beetle fight today. Come on, you promised! Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's right. Still going ahead. <laughs> But, but you see, uh, I I've been out here for ages, and I still can't find a beetle that I like. So, just give Uncle Ito a little more time, okay? Huh? Who are they? Are they your friends? Uh, yeah, that's right. I told them not to come, but what can I say? They were just too worried about me. <laughs> it's because of a little thing called... Uh, Prestige! Yeah, because of all the prestige Uncle Ito has. Huh? What are you talking about? We... Shibba, shibba, up, up, up. Come on, just play along. Leave the kid out of this. Uh, Uncle Ito, you don't look so good. You look like you're about to fall over. <laughs> That's because Uncle Ito bumped his noggin on a tree branch while looking for a beetle. Uh-oh! <laughs> It's all good, though. These horns are rock solid. Okay, if you say so. Granny and I will keep heading back now. Don't be too long. Uh, yep, I'll be right there. Hope you're ready to lose today. Who were those people? The old lady was Granny Oni. She's the one who took me in and raised me. And the kid's name is Daisuke. I, I took him in just a while back. They're both like family to me. They escaped with me out this way, along with my boys from the Arataki gang. If I didn't bring them with me, the Tenryo Commission would be knocking on their doors for sure. Right. But if you care about them so much, then you shouldn't have done all that stuff that made them worry about you in the first place. I... Uh... Listen, how about we make a deal? You two let me go wrap things up with Daisuke, and once we're done battling beetles, the two of us will settle things with a duel. If you win, I'll come quietly. You can take me back to Inazuma City, and you won't hear a peep out of me. Why? Because I'm an Oni of my word. I'll just tell little Daisuke that my friends and I need to step outside for a moment. That way you won't worry. Cool? Hmm. What should we do? There is the kid to consider. Oh, it's on! I like your style. <laughs> All right, but first things first. I need to find an Oni Kabuto to battle with. I've been looking here for ages and haven't found myself a winner yet, so it's time to try somewhere else. Come with me. 
saves you worrying that I might skedaddle. You guys have seen Oni Kabuto out in the wild, right? Even though they might look menacing on the outside, they're big softies on the inside. Most of the time, they're just sitting there doing nothing. But let me tell ya, once the Oni Kabuto start fighting, ho ho ho, they won't let anything get in their way. The grand game of beetle fighting is a match where your beetle tries to flip the other beetle onto its back. Hey, it's not just some kid's game, okay? There's way more to it than that. I have taken part in more beetle fights than you would believe. At least 800. I may have even crossed the thousand mark by this point. Anyway, after a while, you can tell a beetle's fighting potential just by looking at its shape, size, and the patterns on its body. But it's not just about all the physical stuff. Oh no, your Oni Kabuto's gotta be in the right head space as well. If it's not up for a fight or doesn't have the guts, well, then it's game over. <laughs> Boy, are you too lucky you ran into me. When it comes to- But we're not the ones that will be playing. We're just here to keep an eye on you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, anyway, not a problem. You two might think I'm just tooting my own horns here, but just you wait. I'll make- And by the way, that kid has one tough beetle. We can't underestimate it. You have to find a real lean, mean beetle warrior. Okay, so he's not the sharpest horn on the Oni. Okay, let me see. Mm. Ah, there. Let's head to that hill. I'll bet my bottom mora we're gonna find some major league Oni Kabuto hiding out there. Just our luck. Well, hopefully that'll scare all the wimpy beetles away and leave the... Oh, darn it, they're all gone. Let's hop down from here and take a look. My gut's telling me that there's a king-size beetle. <gasps> look, you see all those purple things? It's a whole pile of Oni Kabuto. <laughs> now that's what I'm talking about. What the? Ah, oh, no, not lavender melons. Yeah. <clears throat> well, even a pro like myself can make a mistake from time to time. It's okay, just gotta roll with the punches. Let's try somewhere else. <laughs> See? As long as you're in my company, you're guaranteed to find yourself an Oni Kabuto. on the smaller side, but uh, size isn't everything in a beetle fight. Just let the expert explain, okay? What smaller beetles lack in strength, they make up for in agility. They usually got a whole bunch of sick moves just ready to whip out when the right moment comes. Listen, you can never see a beetle's true energy until it's in the ring. It might look a bit young and docile, but that's got its advantages. Haven't you ever heard the saying, don't judge a book by its cover? Young beetles that have never fought before always go all out in their first fight. 
Older beetles that have already been through the wars tend to just cower in the corner the moment they see a strong opponent. Hey, didn't I say not to worry? Come on, just have a little faith, would ya? My experience is telling me that this Onikabuto was spawned to be a champion! Right here! Look what Paimon found! If we're gonna battle some beetles, then Paimon wants in! It's not like we have anything else to do. When you hopped down, Paimon flew off somewhere else nearby and found this one! What do you think, Ito? It's big and strong and looks like a real fighter! It matches everything you said about a good fighter beetle! But the one you guys found must be way, way bigger. Oh, uh, <laughs> you got some experience catching beetles too, huh? Nope, this is the first one Paimon's ever caught. Well, looks like you got a real knack for this. You'll be a fellow beetle fighting expert in no time. I mean, not as good as me, but... Oh, so overall not that good then. Uh, anyway, great. With both your beetle and mine, I can tell this will finally be the one. This time, I'm gonna win for sure. Well, uh, <clears throat> you know, that's that's just life, man. There are so many people in this world who are talented, uh, passionate, but it's no guarantee that things will go their way. So many unrelated things have to come together at once in just the right way to make victory happen. Uh, there's this word that really sums it up nicely, actually. It's, uh... Coincidence. As in pure luck? Huh. Guess it makes no difference whether we have Paimon's beetle or not then. Might as well just... Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> let's, let's not do anything rash here.
I think both of these fine beetles have a shot at winning. Let's just hang on to them and give them both a try. A true warrior never leaves a good beetle behind. <laughs> anyway, uh, time to head back and get this show started. Man, I am psyched for this. Woo, let's go! Can we start our beetle fight now? Yeah, sure thing, buddy. But you better watch out. I brought a real winner back this time. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm not scared of your beetle. Go, go, stripey ghost! I've got this fight in the bag. Let's go, nimble ninja! Huh? When did you come up with that name? Come on, you can take him, little guy! Loss in a row. <laughs> Stripey Ghost is invincible. Even Uncle Edo can't beat. I won't forget this. I'll beat you next time. I swear. All right, Paimon, you're up. Time to give Crimson Cyclone a shot. Maybe it'll end this losing streak of mine. All right, go get him, Crimson Cyclone. Whoa, that one looks ultra strong, but. It's still no match for you, Stripey. <laughs> All right, little guy. Use your Super Paimon Tornado! No. I can't believe it. I lost. Yay! We won! Ha! Paimon knew Crimson Cyclone would be the best! Boy, did that one put up a fight. Woo! It wiped the floor with Stripey Ghost. I know a real beetle trainer when I see one. Way to kick some beetle butt, partner. <laughs> see? Paimon's got real talent. Of course, oh, right. Yeah, now that the beetle fighting's over and all. Mm hmm? This is for you, Daisuke. Huh? For me? You're really giving it to me? Go ahead, take it, Daisuke. When we finally get back to the city, you can show it off to all your friends. But... Will we ever be able to go back? Of course we will. Trust me. I never go back on my word. Anyway, I got some things I gotta discuss with my friends here. I'll go play with Granny for a while, would ya? <laughs> There's a good boy. Good. The kid doesn't suspect a thing. You're from the Tinryo Commission, aren't you? I bet you're here to capture Uncle Ito. Huh? Hey, didn't I tell ya? They're my friends. Uh, in fact, they're... they're in the gang. <laughs> We're practically family. That's not true. I already know everyone in your little gang, but I've never seen these two before. Uncle Ito didn't do anything wrong. Don't take him away. And not only did he not do anything wrong, he also saved my life. He's not a... Hey, uh, some things we don't tell to outsiders, remember? Uh, how should I explain? I'm a real lousy liar. Ito, sometimes you need to just say what you have to say. Uh, don't worry about us. <sighs> I guess. Thanks, Granny. Seems I can't hide it anymore. Come with me. I'll explain everything. I'll be honest with you. 
This thing the Tenryo Commission is investigating, with someone going around taking people and their possessions, it wasn't me. Any of it. I have my own reasons for lying about it, and I really didn't want to get innocent people caught up in this while I'm still trying to solve the real problem here. I'm the same as you. I just want to avoid conflict at all costs. But it's just not worth it if someone gets hurt. So why in the world would you say that you were the culprit? <sighs> well, maybe you don't know because you're outlanders, but... It all started a long, long time ago. With the story of the Crimson Oni and the Blue Oni. Hold on a second. If you're talking about that fairy tale, we've heard that one already. Oh, so you already know. Well, that makes things a whole lot easier. So, is the story from the fairy tale really true? Everything about the fate of the Oni is true. The blue Oni chose exile, and the crimson Oni stayed behind. But the other details aren't historically accurate. Fairy tales are nice stories, but there's something they leave out. It's a little thing called the cold, hard truth. The Inazuma of long ago was a dangerous place. If you wanted the Raiden Shogun's protection, you had to have a good relationship with the humans. The Oni are a proud kind, so it wasn't easy for them to ask others for acceptance. Over time, the Oni eventually split into two factions. The Crimson Oni were friendly with the humans, but the Blue Oni? They were more stubborn and insisted on keeping to their own. Paimon thought you were two different species. So really, you're all one family? Yep, that's right. There's no real difference between us. We just paint our horns different colors to show which side we belong to. Because humans were still wary of Oni at the time. The Crimson Oni always hoped to find a way to live in peace with the humans, but the Blue Oni kept clashing with them. Humans didn't see a difference between Crimson and Blue Oni. All they knew was that Oni were hard to get along with. If things were to continue that way, the Oni were never gonna get along with humans. And so? The most revered leaders of the Crimson and Blue Oni decided to resolve it once and for all. Over drinks, they swore an oath. The Blue Oni would play the role of Evil Oni to help the Crimson Oni integrate into human society. But the Blue Oni's leader gave two conditions. Huh? What were they? First, the Oni must abandon any prejudice they held against humanity. Every Oni was to accept humans in their heart before the humans accepted them. Oni were not to use their strength to mistreat humans, but were also not to stand for mistreatment against themselves. Second, the Crimson Oni were to integrate with human society, but not by trying to please the humans. The Oni were to embrace their own honest characters, their surging tempers, and their awesome strength to win respect from the humans. In other words, they were to carry on the Oni bloodline while also protecting our Oni pride. After choosing exile, the number of blue Oni began to dwindle, until eventually, they disappeared altogether. Since I first heard the story of the Blue and Crimson Oni as a kid, ugh, I've heard it countless times in my life. Not once did I ever imagine that the Blue Oni clan had actually survived. So you're saying the real culprit was a descendant of the Blue Oni? That's right. Most people don't pay attention to the color of an Oni's horns. They probably don't even know that Blue Oni exist. But nothing gets by the Arataki gang. At the scene of the crime, they saw an Oni with different color horns than mine. Still, it would be strange if the culprit really was a descendant of the Blue Oni. I can't bring myself to accept it. Exactly. They would give up their life before abandoning their pride. I've always respected the Blue Oni for the sacrifice they made. And I know the aspirations my ancestors had for the future of all Oni. Our pride does not allow for any wrongdoing. You don't steal from other people. You don't harm other people, period. My guess is that the Blue Oni was tricked or forced into it somehow. But uh, I don't have any evidence. That's right. If I didn't step in, the Tenryo Commission would have definitely caught them by now. But what does Daisuke have to do with any of this? He said that you saved him so he knows your story, right? He was the one I managed to save from the Ronin after I sent them running from the scene. He was off playing somewhere when they came by and ransacked his house. By the time he came back, his parents had been taken. The whole reason I'm in this is to help this kid find his mom and dad again. I never wanted to tell you any of this. <laughs> my original plan was to knock you both out and take my family to hide somewhere else. There's more to this than just one blue Oni. There's a dangerous group behind everything that's been going on. 
I didn't want to get anyone else caught up in this mess. That's everything. The whole story. If you don't believe me and want to drag me back to Inazuma City, then I'm gonna fight you with all I've got. But if you're willing to believe me, then please, give me a little time. Once I find the Blue Oni, I'll turn the both of us in. Yep, I'm on too. Just treat it like we're here to keep an eye on you. So, you... <laughs> all right. I knew you'd be reasonable. I knew it. I was thinking right from the start. These two fine folks, they're just out here in the pursuit of truth and justice, man. <laughs> we are gonna get along just great. Well, I should tell you, though, things could get a little dangerous, so uh, be ready for anything. <laughs> uh, don't say that I didn't warn you. <laughs> don't worry about us. All right, then our first job is to investigate where this blue Oni is hiding out. There's a victim of his that saw him up close, currently taking refuge at Songonomiya's camp. I figure we can start by talking to him. Yo, you must be Masato. Uh, an Oni? Oh no, not another one! Oh, uh, yeah. Not the one that robbed you, though. So, uh, <laughs> chill. I contacted you before, remember? I need your help. Oh, uh, right. Sorry. I'm still a bit on edge after the incident. <clears throat> so anyway, here's what happened. I was just out transporting some goods when a group of Ronin suddenly attacked me. It's not the first time that's happened to me. Usually, you just hand over some Mora and they'll leave you alone. At least you don't lose your goods that way. But this time was different. They weren't willing to talk things over. Instead, they took my things and they started coming for me! Huh? That's totally uncalled for! I got down on my knees and begged. Said I had a family to care for and that my business is our only livelihood. Then I saw that there was an Oni among the group. I thought he was going to be the one to finish me off. But instead, he stopped the others and told them to let me go. Yeah, that got them all arguing with each other. His cohort said that I was sure to retaliate if they released me. But the young Oni was insistent that they shouldn't lay a finger on me. Things got real heated. I thought they were going to come to blows. Luckily, they let me escape with my life in the end. 
and I scrambled to get myself here, where I'd be safe. <sighs> I never want to set foot outside of here again. So he'll steal, but he won't harm people. <laughs> Seems he has some sort of standards. Did he say why they were robbing you? Surely it was Mora, right? What else could they have wanted with me? I mean, I can't say for sure. It's not like I asked. But what I did hear them say was, the goods are worth more than the merchant's life. Or something like that. Ugh, that idiot Oni. Do you have any idea where they went after they robbed you? I have no clue. But I think they're pretty active in the Tatarasuna area. You aren't gonna go after them, are you? Seriously, I'd advise against it. There are too many of them, and they're all heavily armed. Ah, don't worry. It's just a bunch of no-name scumbags. I got a whole laundry list of scores to settle with them. If these two islands are where they tend to hang around, we're sure to run into them at Nazuchi Beach sooner or later. Day. Going perfect somewhere. distance. Uh, Surrender. They gotta pass through here sometime. Let's just hang tight for a while. If I'm not mistaken, they'll be showing up any time now. Yeah, things might get a little rough, so we better... Oh, here they come! Yeah, there they are. And one of them has horns. Alright, it's go time. Looks like you fellas aren't going down without a fight. Fine by me. Let's fight first, talk later. To the very... Let's roll! 
Even think about running. It's me, Arataki Ito, descendant of the Crimson Oni. <laughs> I know who you are. From the day we are born, every blue Oni knows their purpose. We all know our fate is one of self-sacrifice. But what about the Crimson Oni, hmm? You don't know anything about us. Not our miserable history, or any of our names. Mine's Takuya, by the way. But you don't even care, do you? Because those who get sacrificed should be forgotten, right? No, you're wrong. I never knew the Blue Oni had survived to this day, and the moment I found out, I was determined that I would find you. Since you remember the pact between our two factions, I assume you also remember the pride we share as Oni. So my question is, how could a proud Oni like yourself go and abuse the weak and plunder the innocent? Why break the oath that our kind swore all those years ago? <laughs> huh? What's so funny? <sighs> Who are you to talk about pride and oaths with me? The Blue Oni gave up everything, just so the Crimson Oni could live peacefully in human society. But let me ask you, Arataki Ito, what exactly do you contribute to human society? You're a blundering fool who can't hold down a real job, a laughingstock of the town, and worse still, you let them get your vision during the vision hunt decree. Protecting the Oni pride? Ha! Huh. You wouldn't know how if you tried. You're a disgrace to the Oni kind. Hey, come on. None of that stuff's a big deal. I, I mean, you're hanging me out to dry here, man. Since when do you care what other people think? You just do whatever you want. It's not like anyone can stop you. But do you have any idea of the kind of life my kin and I have lived while you've been hanging around in human society? We were cut off from the rest of the world. We severed all contact with it. And since then, we've had no place to live, no stable source of food, no clothing, no medicine, nothing. Besides the oath we swore to uphold in our so-called Oni pride, we had nothing. So that's why you joined a band of thieves? That's right. Why should I accept that life? Is holding fast to a worthless oath supposed to help me provide for my family and friends? I've abandoned our Oni pride. It's meaningless. I want to live. I've given everything that I've stolen from humans to my community. What I've taken will at least keep them from starving and ease their pain. That's what matters most to me. Yeah! And besides, the Blue Oni sacrificed themselves so that Oni could be accepted as part of human 
in society. If people see Oni causing trouble again, then that'll defeat the whole purpose of the sacrifice you made. <laughs> you make a good point. But Arataki Ito's the one who needs to get that into his thick skull. The blue Oni are the bad guys, so we're expected to do bad things. Our actions won't tarnish the reputation of the Crimson Oni. Unless, of course, this bonehead decides it'd be a great idea to take all the blame for himself, completely destroying the trust between humans and the Crimson Oni in the process. He's the one that wasted the sacrifice we made. Huh? Well, I only had to do that because of you! I couldn't just stand back and let the Tenryo Commission drag you away! You should get your priorities straight. The Blue Oni are history, alright? Forget about us. The Crimson Oni are the ones who must live on. Why couldn't you have just stayed out of it? There they are! Seize them! Oh no! It's the Tenryo Commi- <sighs> Forget it! This was a waste of time anyway. Look, I don't expect you to understand me, but you could at least take a look in the mirror sometime. Hey! Hey! He got away! Uh-oh! We need to get- <clears throat> We can't get caught here. Looks like I'm up to bat. Just wait here, and we'll escape together when the time's right. Whatever you do, don't attack any of the Tenryo Commission, or they'll be after you too. Battle formation! Soldiers, <laughs> quick! <laughs> Come on, men! He won't get away this time! Just give yourself up, Arataki Ito! Let's roll! Oh, coming through! I won't forget this. They really came out in force today. I'm kind of flattered the Tenryo Commission sent so many. But I still haven't completely recovered from the bean attack earlier. I'm starting to lose my edge here. No, no way. All that would do is send them after our blue Oni friend instead. But I have to settle things with him first, man to man. Then what should we do? The Tenryo Commission's about to arrest you! Uh, no choice but to keep kicking some Tenryo butt! Hey boss! Thought you'd have all the fun without us? Granny Oni sent us. We're here to lend a hand. Maybe we can't take him, but we can sure slow him down. Now's your chance. Go! Hey, I told you to stay out of this one. Well, we're in it now. Come on, there's no time. Go, do what you gotta do, boss. <laughs> All right, then. Watch yourselves. As soon as I'm done, I'm coming back for you. Come on, you two. Time to roll. Don't let them get away. After them. Hey. You guys want some of this? There's plenty to go around. Run for it, boss! As boss of the Arataki gang, getting rescued by my own boys feels... pretty humiliating. I promise to never let you down, boys. All right, we've got some footprints to follow. Let's find Takuya. It was real touching and all what they did, but those few guys weren't much of a gang. Hey, it takes Mora to run a gang, okay? They're all I've got for now. Is it just me, or are there more and more footprints here? Ah, oh, a wrecked cart and some goods. Look alive, we've got company. Just the rebuild. Here you are. There's more! Finally, I... See! See the fairy! Yo! They definitely don't want us going any further. 
Let's see what's waiting for us up ahead. Huh. Besides the footprints, there are other signs of life here, too. Must be plenty going on around here. Let's investigate. They couldn't have just disappeared into thin air. <laughs> yeah, unless they're all ninjas or something. Hidden entrance, yes! All right, I think we just found their hideout. This is gonna be where they keep all the people they took. Paimon thinks Taki is probably in there as well. Huh? Uh, oh, uh, fire away? <laughs> of course I did. Come on, I'm not that dumb. But it takes a world-class blockhead like Takuya to think his ideas are actually gonna work. So I'm here to save him no matter what. Huh? What were you two talking about? Are you keeping Paimon in the dark again? <laughs> uh, let's go. A walk would be nice. by less than legitimate means, no doubt. And all the more reason we gotta put an end to this. This mechanism's for. Let's go! To the very Oh! It's moving! Ah, <laughs> see? What did I tell you? Just trust my instincts.
can't catch me. Dear, we don't even know if he was taken here or not. But, but... Oh, my little Daisuke! Oh, you must be Daisuke's parents! Yes, that's right! Have you seen him? Where is he? Is he all right? Don't worry. He's safe and sound. Someone's looking after him now on Yashiori Island. I can show you where on the map. He's been worried about you. I bet he'll be relieved to see you. You were the one who saved him? Oh, thank you, thank you! <laughs> no, no, please, no. No need to thank me. It's it's my pleasure, really. It's just who I am. 
That's what I do. Before you go calling me a hero, let me ask you this. Wouldn't any other self-respecting guy who saw another person in danger have done the exact same thing? Really? Just one little compliment and it goes straight to his head. <sighs> These vagrants are insatiable. They'll do anything for money. No one dares stand up to them for fear of what they might do. Well, would they really do anything, Duress? Um, no, actually, because one of the guys, the one with Oni horns on his head, has always shielded us so far. Oh, in fact, his horns look just like the ones this guy has. At night, he would secretly bring us food and water. I don't understand what he was trying to do. Are you a friend of his? Or perhaps a relative? Uh, relative, I guess. Oh, maybe there's something secretly troubling him. He seemed different from the rest of the gang. They seem like heartless crooks, but I'd say he comes across more like a confused child who made some poor choices. Uh, let me put it this way. There are a few things he needs to straighten out in his head, and I'm here to point him in the right direction. I'm glad to hear that. He's lucky to have family like you. <laughs> Don't worry. He'll be in my trusty hands. I'll help him see the light. Anyway, you should scram. It's still not safe here. Yes, thanks again. You've rescued our entire family. We are indebted to you. Huh. A child that made some poor choices. Anyway, let's get going. We still have time.
can't catch me. Place. The jig's up! Surrender while you can! See no more! Going somewhere? Let's roll! Charge! Careless! Crumble! I will have order. Solidify. My blade. It's showtime. See no more. The fairy. Bet you think you've won, don't you? <laughs> so naive. This is my home turf. I'll let you in on a little secret. A long time ago, I picked up this rare paper charm. It's very precious to me. What makes it so special is that if you tear one piece, the other piece starts tearing too. Uh, Newsflash, don't care about your cute little origami obsession. You better stay where you are and let me finish. Aren't you curious what the other piece is used for? I'll tell you. It's now the critical component of a mechanism, and when it gets torn, this place goes up in smoke! Yeah, the whole hideout is rigged with explosives and ready to blow! What? You're gonna blow this whole place up? Oh, don't worry about me. I made sure that I've got an escape route. The rest of you, though, you're gonna be buried deep among the rubble. You've had your fun. Now it's goodbye. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, my paper charm! Where's my paper charm? Oh, I'm sorry. Are you looking for this? Yes, that's... But when did you... I snatched it earlier. To stop you from doing anything hasty. Why, you... Now you're going to betray me? You're one to talk. What about burying everyone here? If you ask me, that sounds like you've already betrayed our agreement, no? <sighs> Just give it here! You done talking now? Huh? You sure? Great. Cause I'm done listening! Yeah. Great work, Takuya. You arrived in the nick of time. Stay away from me. Huh? I said stay away, or I'll tear the paper charm. Hey, oh, okay, okay, uh, fine. Just calm down. What are you doing? Just because I won't let him blow this place to bits doesn't mean that I won't do it myself. Unless you want to get buried, you should leave this place now. Take everyone here and get out! <laughs> you won't go through with it. If you were that cruel, then why bother protecting every person you've come across? I'm not here to reason with you. Go! Just get out of here! This sacrifice is mine to make. Mine alone! Why couldn't you just stay out of it? No one needs to sacrifice themselves. All right, then you tell me. What am I supposed to do? I've tarnished our Oni pride and abandoned our ancestors' oath. Only sacrifice can restore my pride now. I chose this path so I could provide for my fellow Oni. I was ready to die from the very big. This is between us blue, Oni. But you... If it wasn't for you, everything would have worked out perfectly. They're here. We won't let them slip away this time. Uh-oh. There's nowhere else to run! Hey, Tenryo Commission! I'm the one you're looking for. I did it. I'm behind everything. Arataki Ito is innocent. You're the ones in charge of detaining criminals in human society, right? 
I'm sure you can tell who the criminal is here. Huh? It's like he's trying to reenact the fairy tale, sacrificing himself for the Crimson Oni. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. It's me you've been looking for, and here I am. How are you ever going to report back without capturing me? <sighs> Stop fooling around, Ito. Listen, Takuya. Sacrificing yourself won't solve anything. Your sacrifice can't protect me or your fellow Oni. And giving up your life isn't going to make theirs any longer. Sacrificing yourself is one way to escape your fate, but the only one you'll be setting free is yourself. Listen to me. You want to be the tough guy? Huh? Well, this is the coward's way out. Don't let your sacrifice stain our Oni pride. <sighs> The Blue Oni have been scraping the bottom of the barrel all these years, so let's give them a new beginning. We've made mistakes, but we can make up for them. Fate hasn't been kind to the Oni? Well then let's tear it up and start over. But before any of that can happen, you need to get yourself behind me and forget about all that self-sacrifice stuff. Now let's go. But we're not done talking about this. Uh, Takuya! I'll take care of this. There are still people in danger. Go, help them! Hey, I got this. Come on! Forget about me! Just go! It's what I deserve! Ah, oh, shut up, would ya? gonna hurt tomorrow. Ugh. What's up with the looks on your faces? I said we'd be okay, didn't I? I'm sure I'd be looking a whole lot sharper right now if it wasn't for that brutal bean attack of yours earlier. Why? Why would you do this for me? I'm the guilty one here. I don't deserve this. Because we're Oni, that's why. We share the same blood, brother. Our parents and their parents before them never taught us that it was okay to abandon family in need. I just wish you'd come to find me sooner. If you knew about me all along, then you should have come and asked me for help. I never would have dreamed of turning you away. The Blue Oni disappeared so that they wouldn't bring trouble to the Crimson Oni. If I came to you for help, wouldn't that just undo everything the Blue Oni have done? Not to me. I've always respected the Blue Oni for their sacrifice. Nothing they did was in vain. It's only because of them that we have survived to see today, and built a world where Oni and humans can live side by side. Honestly, everything that I have now, I owe to the Blue Oni. And let me tell you, the Inazuma of today wouldn't see you as a villain just because of the color of your horns. You say all that, but... In spite of everything, you're barely getting by. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how I roll, man. You remember the pack, don't you? We're not supposed to suck up to the humans. We're supposed to earn their respect. Every member of the Arataki gangs had a tough time trying to fit in. Take Akira, for example. He snores like you wouldn't believe. Or Genta. He's got a serious temper problem. And Mamoru? Well, he's colorblind. Even Granny Oni. She got that name for taking me in as a kid. 
We're all rejects and outcasts in some way, but we don't care. You want to talk about pride? Well, in our gang, we're proud to welcome anyone who's been through adversity with open arms. But... I... Nah, don't worry. The Arataki gang's already a bunch of misfits. You really think you could cramp our style? We've dealt with the Kairagi and the people they took captive. I assume the two of you are finished talking. Takia, based on the findings of our investigation, I hereby announce that you are officially under arrest for forceful seizure of people and property. Please do not attempt to resist. All stolen articles will be reclaimed. That means we'll be seizing all the goods you passed on to your kin. No, please don't. Without those goods, they'll... It's all right, Takuya. Those goods never belong to us anyway. Don't worry. I'll help take care of your kin. Now that I know the situation, I'll personally make sure they never suffer again. Might want to put your grand plans on hold there. You're under arrest too for numerous assaults on the Tenryo Commission officers. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I guess I forgot about that. But no worries, I'll put my gang on the case. My boys will take good care of the Blue Oni. Yeah, we've already arrested them too. Oh, right, yeah, uh... <sighs> That's what they get for resisting the Tenryo Commission. Yeah, I guess it's up to you then, Traveler. Could you be a pal and tell Granny Oni about the Blue Oni situation? <sighs> Thanks. And thanks for sticking with me to the end. Once I'm out of the slammer, I'll find a way to make it all up to you. As for you two, lending them your aid when you knew full well they were in the wrong means that the culpability extends to you too. But, given your unique circumstances, and in light of the complexity of this case, we won't press charges this time. <laughs> Sorry for the trouble. Hey, wait! W Unique circumstances? Are these guys like a, a, a big deal or something? Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Because I was going to say, you know, like, I, I'm kind of a big deal myself. <laughs> yeah, all right, uh, see you next time. Whenever that'll be. does sound like my Ito. So, did they take Uncle Ito away? Yes, they did. But don't be too upset, Daisuke. We will have the chance to see him again. He and his gang may have acted recklessly, but the fact remains that he still helped us. Yeah, I knew it! Uncle Ito helped us, and he's awesome! Now, don't get any ideas, Daisuke. Ito is a f- If you ask me, I'd say he's like one of those little Oni Kabuto. Though he looks fierce on the outside, he has a kind heart. He's not a delinquent, but he'll never back down from a fight. Uh, I don't really get it, but it sounds like a compliment. I can't wait for my next beetle fight with Uncle Ito. Thank you, Granny, for taking care of our little boy. I hope that Ito and his friends will be released as quickly as possible. Yes. You needn't worry. The officials in the Tenryo Commission will certainly exercise. It's time we started heading back. We'll be sure to visit again soon. Ah, I'm glad that everything was resolved in the end. 
things were looking quite dire. But as for the blue Oni, just leave them to me. If there's one thing an old granny like myself can do, it's caring for others. Do you need our help? <laughs> no, no. Go on ahead. I'm sure you have other adventures beckoning. Besides, once Ito is released, he'll be here to help me. Oh, yes. And you know what? I think that's what makes him adorable. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> he does whatever he puts his mind to. He's sincere, brave, and determined. Back when I took him in, everyone thought I was most unusual indeed. They started calling me Granny Oni, but I've never been ashamed of this name. On the contrary, I'm quite proud of it. Because Ito is my pride and joy. A long, long time ago, in a village lost to time, there lived a crimson oni and a blue oni. They were the best of friends. The crimson oni wanted to be friends with the humans, so the blue oni played the role of the naughty kid. And then he left. After a long time, the crimson oni was living happily with the humans, but in his heart, he wanted to bring the Blue Oni back home. The Crimson Oni didn't know where to find the Blue Oni. His search took him up the highest mountains and across the widest rivers. He found many traces of the Blue Oni, but the more he found, the clearer it became. The Blue Oni was hiding on purpose. So just as the blue Oni had once done, the Crimson Oni left him a letter. Dear Al, I've made lots of human friends now, and I want to have a big party for everyone. I want all my friends to be there. That means you too, Al. If you don't want to meet me, you can just watch from a distance. The blue Oni snuck back to the village and hid in the shadows. He saw the great feast and roaring fire, and longed to join in. But though his stomach rumbled, the blue oni remembered the oath of old, and kept his distance. Suddenly, he jumped! The crimson oni was right behind him! <laughs> hey, you're finally back! Come on, I'll introduce you. It's time everyone met my best friend. Hey, Traveler! Remember that pit at the bottom of the chasm? You know, the one that the giant pillar smashed into. Where are we headed this time? Oh, so you've been wondering about that. Where did this rain come from?
Traveler and Paimon? I didn't expect to see you two here. Yanfei? Shouldn't you be at work in Lile Harbor? What are you doing out in the middle of nowhere? Well, to be perfectly honest, this case is a little out of the ordinary. In fact, this is the first time I've ever witnessed the bottom of the chasm. Oh, but before I forget, could you do me a favor, please? If anyone happens to ask about me or my present whereabouts, just tell them you haven't seen me. Huh? What are you talking about? No, no, it's not like that. Uh, look, it's quite a long story. So if you could, please just cover for me. I'll see you later. Hey! And there she goes. What in Tevet was that all about? Paimon starting to feel nervous all of a sudden. Do you think she did something illegal and now she's gone into hiding here? <gasps> or maybe something super scary happened? Don't be so naive! The world is complicated these days, you know. We should be prepared for the... Oh, what a dilemma. Should we really cover for her? Oh, hey! You over there! Yeah, you! Ah, someone's coming! But that voice sounds pretty familiar. Ah, <laughs> it's you two. So, uh, what are you two doing in a place like this, huh? Wait, don't tell me. Hmm, you're on vacation. I must say, you two are looking pretty good. Things been going your way lately? Cause I have been doing amazing. <laughs> Hey there, I'm with the Arataki gang. Kuki Shinobu, nice to meet you. Oh, <laughs> all right. I almost forgot she was back there. Let me introduce you to Shinobu, the pride and joy of the Arataki gang. Oh, another member of Ito's gang! Let me tell you, she's one of Hanamizaka's best and brightest, so of course she's in the gang. Shinobu takes care of practically everything in the Arataki gang. She can protect you guys too, you know. A friend of the boss is a friend of mine. You must be the traveler in Paimon. Yep, yep. Nice to meet you too, Shinobu. The pleasure's mine. I have a feeling that we'll be working together soon enough. So, uh, Ito, if she's the one that takes care of everything in the gang, then doesn't that kind of make her the gang's real boss? Are you kidding? Of course I'm the boss! To the four corners of Tevat, there is only one boss of Hanamizaka's legendary Arataki gang, a me. Uh, okay. Paimon gets the dynamic now. A useless boss with an ultra-capable subordinate. Hey, you... Uh, uh, you know what? Forget it. The average person couldn't possibly understand the dynamics of the Arataki gang. As the leader, I can't let myself stoop down to your level. <clears throat> anyway, have you seen a pink-haired legal, uh, mage lady? Wears a goofy hat, knows everything kind of short. Uh-oh. Her name's Yenfei. She's a legal advisor from Liyue. I thought perhaps you two would know her. Oh, 
No, we haven't seen her. We don't know this person at all. <laughs> Aha, so you have seen her. Uh, no, what gave you that idea? Paimon didn't say anything. Aw, look at you getting all antsy. <laughs> Seems I was able to get to the truth after all. When someone is lying, their eyes often start wandering subconsciously. <laughs> anyway, don't worry. I assure you we don't have any ill intentions. So, uh, you guys know Yamve? Well, she, uh, kind of saved my life, so... Yeah, you could say we've met. She saved your life? Wait, hold on. What are you two doing in the chasm anyway? You know that the Sakoku Decree has been lifted recently in Inazuma, right? Well, Shinobu wanted to come to Liyue and pick up her graduation certificate. I came along because it's safer to travel in numbers. Graduation certificate? Did you study in Liyue? Yes. I studied law at the Tongwen Academy in Liyue. Unfortunately, the Sakoku Decree was implemented just when I was home visiting my family before graduation. So I'm a few years late getting my graduation certificate. We were taking care of some errands in Liyue, and the boss got tangled up with some millilith while we were standing in a line. He was about to get arrested when, luckily, Yenfei happened to be walking past and helped us out. Yep. If it wasn't for her, our trip to Liyue would have ended with me and the slammer. <laughs> so, you know, I just wanted to do something nice to show my heartfelt gratitude. But she said she didn't need my help with anything. I thought there's a chance she might run into trouble here on her own, so I followed her here. Yeah, just in case she needs me to come leaping to her rescue. <laughs> What? No, it's not like that at all. Look, I, I just wanted to protect her, okay? She looked like she was in a hurry, so I thought she must be out doing something important. People can get into trouble when they're out in the world dealing with serious business, you know? I'm, I'm just being considerate, really. <clears throat> Traveler. That way... Ah, great. Thanks. I'll go after her. Shinobu, time to roll. You're not my savior. Ito's coming to your rescue. Appreciate the help. Until next time. Uh, Traveler, did you just send Ito the wrong way on purpose? Huh. Shinobu seemed pretty sharp. Paimon doesn't think you can pull one on her like that. Or maybe she knows that Ito can be a big nuisance, so she's trying to stop him from bothering Yanfei. Oh, if that's the case, then wow, she really knows how to call the shots. Well, at least this way nobody will be bothering Yanfei. If we run into her again later, we should let her know that we helped her out. Hmm. All right, now let's go take a look at the crash site from last time. that were following you. Oh, good. Thanks a lot. The guy with the weird outfit seemed super outgoing. Normally, I don't mind making friends, but I've got work to do today. Oh? Huh? So what kind of work are you doing in a place like this? Aw, oh, don't tell Paimon you're thinking about becoming an adventurer, too. Well, as a legal advisor, sometimes I also have to travel in person. I came to the chasm to deal with a will. A... Uh, a will? That's right. I found a will inside an old book. I'm guessing it was left by someone of great importance. It appears he lost a magical device and wished to retrieve it. Paimon didn't know legal advisors have to deal with that kind of thing. Huh, what a job! Will execution is also part of my work as a legal advisor. Of course, cases like this are quite rare. The chasm is not the kind of place you can just waltz into whenever you want. Oh, so you do know what kind of place this is. <gasps> Who's that? Ah, oh, I thought I might find you here.
Whatever case you're working on in the chasm, I'm sure Liyue's top legal consultant can handle it without my input. <laughs> That's funny. I thought we'd established that my legal opinion doesn't count for anything when Yelon's around. Uh, who is she? This is Yelon. Liyue's, uh... Well, let's just say she works in the Ministry of Civil Affairs. I can at least say that much, right? Anyway, she's a friend of mine. Sure. Coincidentally, I have something to do here as well. Seems chance has brought us all together. You may not know me, Traveler in Paimon, but I've certainly heard about you. You're all here on business, and it's my job to monitor the chasm. According to regulations, I should accompany you. But, as it turns out, I have other things that require my attention. I'm afraid I can't join you this time. You may go about your business. Just try not to make a ruckus. Oh, that's most unfortunate. I was about to ask for your assistance. Could you spare a little time to help me take care of this will? For old time's sake? Hmm, I don't know. Depends what's in it for me. <laughs> Fair enough. I suppose even a guide needs to get paid. It just so happens that Madame Ping gave me some nice tea. I'll treat you to a cup if you agree. <laughs> Why don't you tell me a little more about how you got here first? Then I'll... Hey, you! Uh, Ito? What is he doing back here? I know what you two did! You really tried to throw me off, didn't you? <laughs> and I thought we were buds. That's close enough. Huh? Who are you? Sorry, this area is part of the chasm. It's closed to the general public. Are you kidding me? I, I, I don't see any warning signs or fences. What gives you the right to keep me out? <sighs> Kid, where there's real danger, you'll never see a warning sign. Uh, Paimon never knew this place was so important. It's true. This is not a place you can just go in and out of as you wish. That's also why I didn't want anyone to follow me. Unfortunately, you didn't listen. The Traveler has done a lot for Liyue in the past. And Yenfei is a renowned legal consultant in Liyue, so I can trust their intentions. As for you two... Hey, what's that supposed to mean? You're trying to say that I'm not famous enough and my intentions are no good? I don't know your background, so I can't give you free passage here. Besides, Yenfei doesn't seem to need your help, does she? Ha! How would you know what Yenfei needs? What, are you two joined at the hip or something? Right. Anyway... I don't need to be a mind reader to see that. In any case, as a visitor from Inazuma, I'd suggest you defer to a local when in doubt. Stick to the local rules and keep yourself out of trouble. Oh! <coughs> Why, you? Please, try not to be so impulsive. She is right, you know. Uh-oh. Things are starting to get a little heated here. Oh, not good. He really shouldn't start butting heads with Yelon. It's true that we don't know anything about the unique conditions of this place. So we'll heed your advice and leave immediately. But if this really is a dangerous area, seriously, you should put up a sign. Thanks for the suggestion. I'll consider it. Oh yeah? And what if we don't leave, hmm? Boss! Then, I'm afraid things might get... unpl- Is that so? You really think you can take the two of us? Wow. <laughs> Gotta admit, I like your optimism. Although you're friends with the Traveler and Yenfei, I'd still suggest you heed my warning. Ha! <laughs> Thanks for that, but, uh, too bad I'm not buying it. If you're so strong, then why don't you show me what you got? Hold on, boss. There's no need to start a fight here. Oh, no. I'm going in whether she likes it or not. <laughs> You think I was joking around, huh? Oh no, these two are about to go at it! <sighs> Please, wait a minute, you two! This whole thing started because of me! Why don't you just save me the embarrassment and just... <sighs> huh? Huh? <sighs> Uh-oh, it's a... Hey, stop trying to change the subject. I'm gonna... Uh, uh, uh-huh. Uh, 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 uh. 
Uh, ouch! What happened? Uh, oh, hey, are you all right? my books under me to break the fall didn't help at all. <sighs> this place... Uh, where are we? Uh, I'm gonna feel that in the morning. <sighs> hey, Shinobu, Traveler, and my savior, is everyone okay? <sighs> well, this is an unfortunate turn of events. Hey, so, uh, how far down did we fall? Hmm. <sighs> It seems the ground collapsed during our little confrontation up there. Perhaps because we triggered the elemental forces. Well, don't look at me. If you weren't so rude, maybe I wouldn't have gotten mad. <sighs> Who can put up with that kind of dude? It's my duty to stop intruders from breaking into important places. If telling the truth sounds rude, then I'm afraid you're just a little too fragile. Hey, life's too short to give in all the time. Boss, I'm afraid you're not going to win this argument. I suggest we stop provoking her. Hey, whose side are you on here? I'm simply pointing out the facts. I understand how you feel, but you're making my life difficult by starting random fights with everyone. <laughs> Looks like Ito can't argue against either Yeon or Shinobu. He's in a real tough spot now. Uh, hey! What do you mean? Don't you dare compare Paimon to Ito! Whoa, whoa, what do you mean? You looking for a fight too? <laughs> Paimon was just saying how it is! Everyone knows you're a bit of an idiot. You calling me an idiot? Oh yeah? Well, you're a... a puny little flying lavender melon, ha! Flying lavender melon? Oh, that's it! Paimon's mad! Time to give you an ugly nickname! Uh, Bullchucker! We seem to be a long way down from where we fell. It's impossible to see what's going on up above. <sighs> it's unlikely we'll be able to climb back up that far. We'll need to find another way. I'm sorry to interrupt your lovely little chat here, but I think there's something you may need to know. The chasm is regarded as a mysterious area in Liyue. It was sealed off for years due to a mining accident. Whatever goes on down here, I suggest you remember this. You didn't see anything? You didn't hear anything, and you're not gonna ask any questions. Save you from getting caught up in things you shouldn't know about. I won't treat you as hostiles, and in exchange, I hope you won't make things difficult when it comes to keeping secrets. I'll do what I can to find a way out. Huh? Well, where does she think she's going? Like she said, to search for an exit. Chances are that Yelan is the best among us at survival and handling emergencies. We should just let her go. I'm afraid I must apologize. I don't typically disclose details of a client's will to third parties, which is why I couldn't tell you the truth. <sighs> I came to the chasm in search of the Fantastic Compass, which is mentioned in the will. Many years ago, my client gave this magical device to someone ambitious, hoping that it'd be handy in times of need. According to an eyewitness account, the person who received the device took it into the chasm and has been missing ever since. Throughout history, many wars have been fought in the vicinity of the chasm. Even if that person died in one of the wars, I still wish to do my utmost and find the device and fulfill the client's wish. Yelan's words of caution were not unwarranted. There are dangers lurking in the chasm. I'm sure you've all realized that by now. Given that we're all caught in this mess, let's try to find a way out together. Whatever you say, my savior, I'll do whatever you ask. From now on, we're a team. All of us. And as for that big jerk, well... I guess that includes her, too. You said Yelan works for the Ministry of Civil Affairs, huh? Paimon can tell she's tougher than most, but... Wow. Her job sounds demanding! Well, that's what she tells outsiders. I can't disclose too much about her identity, but I'd say she's the only person who can handle this type of work. 
What kind of lame job would have someone go out to the middle of nowhere? Oh, Parma knows an adventurer. Hey, what's with the face? Oh, did Paimon say something wrong? That's literally what the two of us do, isn't it? Uh, you're so stingy these days. Oh, just let Paimon be an adventurer by association, okay? Yeah, she's got a point, Traveler. You're Paimon's boss. Take it from me. As a great leader, you should learn to be a little more generous. You know, let your sidekick share some of the glory. Ugh, you really don't understand anything about us. Paimon, don't take him too seriously. He's just joking. Ugh, for the sake of Shinobu, fine. <laughs> I'm the boss, so I'll let it slide. Hmm. Perhaps this was another sealed location, but an undocumented one. What could be in here? I've got some food and water on me. If anyone needs some, just let me know. Great! You know, Bull Checker, you may not be the sharpest tool in the shed, but your subordinate here seems super capable and reliable. <laughs> I know. Isn't she the best? What? Hey! I am too a sharp tool! There seems to be an entrance up ahead, with a path inside. Wonder where it leads to. Well, let's go take a look. Who would have guessed we'd find a domain entrance in a place like this? If there's a way in, then there's a way out. Let's go and take a look. The rocks here seem to be old Liyue mountain rocks. They're similar to what I've seen in books. This domain must have existed for quite some time now. <laughs> What's that sound? <sighs> ah! Oh! It's Xiao! Conqueror of Demons? What are you doing here? Huh? Oh, uh, I came down from above. Uh, I heard a noise, so I followed it here. So you're not here by accident. Hmm. Want to team up? No, I have something else to do. I'm looking for someone. You shouldn't be here. I would urge you to go back as soon as possible. Well, that's Shell for you. Shows up without a warning and disappears without a trace. Huh. That guy looked pretty tough. Maybe almost as tough as me. Seems like a solid dude. Seriously, bull checker? Where do you get your confidence from? Should we really be letting him go off on his own? Oh, he wouldn't listen, no matter how much you tried to talk him out of it. He is super tough, though, so don't worry about him. Everyone, keep your eyes and ears peeled from here on out. We don't know what lies ahead, so we have to be ready for anything. Oh, look, I'm happy to say we're all on the same team and everything, but, uh, could you cut the little speeches and the whole follow-the-leader act? I, for one, think I should be able to look after myself. Boss! Ugh, okay, okay. Besides, Yelan is just looking out for everyone. You know, Bullchucker, you're a guest here, so maybe try to get along with everyone. Ha! Please, you're not a local either, Flying Lavender Melon. So stop trying to sound like one. Labyrinths like this are unique to Liyue. This place is actually pretty cool. If we weren't in such a hurry to get out, we could kick back and enjoy the scenery a little. Allow me! Out of my way! See! Rest and rebuild! 
huh? Wait, this ain't right. Uh, uh, how did we end up back here? So we've been here already? Yes, this is exactly where we started. But we couldn't have taken a wrong turn. We were headed in the same direction the entire time. We never turned around. Yes, that's what I thought too. Traveler, we were going the right way, weren't we? How strange. There's a legend in Inazuma about a merchant who was tricked by a Bake Danuki one evening and kept circling around the same place the whole night. Even by dawn, they still hadn't found a way out. Yeah, Pylon's heard that one before too. So we're all familiar with the story then? Good, because I'm pretty sure that's what's happening to us right now. But fear not, I happen to have a certain sidekick who can exercise yokai and spirits and whatnot. Let me summon him real quick. Unbelievable. An Oni who's friends with an exorcist? Huh. What an open-minded guy. For the boss, ignorance is a virtue. You're up, Ushi. Go get that spirit. <coughs> this is Ushi, an auxiliary member of the Artaki gang. <coughs> <laughs> oh, Ushi says hello, everyone. You can just call him Ushi or Beefcake. Yeah, he's got a keen sense of direction, so I'll let him lead the way. <laughs> I didn't know gangs could have auxiliary members. This does not have the trappings of something that's gonna work. <laughs> You're telling me. All right, go, Ushi. Go find us a way out of here. What's that? Oh, really? Oh, no way. What's wrong? Ushi says he's searched everywhere, but there's no exit. That doesn't add up. If we were able to come in, then there must be a way to get out. Here, let me take another look. Has anyone else noticed this? We initially thought we fell here from above. At that time, there was a way out high overhead. But now, it seems even that exit has disappeared. Inexplicable, if you ask me. It seems there's more than meets the eye with these underground structures. Hmm. I'm gonna take another look around. Everywhere we look, there are just more and more rocks! Uh, maybe we've just misremembered. Maybe this isn't the place we started from. What? You scared now? N no. Paimon's super brave. <laughs> Oh, yeah? Well, uh, Ushi also thinks you're scared. It's okay. Don't be scared to admit you're, uh, <laughs> scared. You've got us here to protect you. We can't just sit here twiddling our thumbs. Let's keep looking for a way out. Shinobu, you stay here with my precious savior. I'll take the Traveler and Paimon with me. Got it. Be careful, everyone. Please, <laughs> there's no need to keep calling me savior. Just, Yenfei is fine. Mr. Arataki, it seems that as the head of the Arataki gang, you possess a strong sense of leadership. Ah, too kind, too kind. And just call me Ito. Since we're a team now, we should have each other's backs. Uh, Paimon, if you feel scared again, I can cover your eyes for you. <sighs> seems there's really no way out. <sighs> I can't shake the feeling that there's something off about this place. Boss, did you guys find anything over there? Not only that, I could have sworn I saw some shadows moving a second ago. <sighs> this place better not be haunted. Probably not the right time to ask this, but Paimon just can't help it. Ito, you're an Oni. Doesn't that kind of mean everywhere you go is haunted? No, ignore the red horns, okay? I, I'm talking about spooky, floaty ghosts. Now you see them, now you don't kind of haunted. Uh, Hito, are you afraid of ghosts? Oh no, boss, you've been found out. What? Me? <laughs> no way! What, are you kidding? <sighs> Stop choking around. <sighs> Seriously, though. Anymore. Hey, Bullchucker, if you're scared, Paimon can cover your eyes for you. Ugh. Maybe I should make better use of my time. Add a little salt and some pepper. Yeah, 
Roasted lavender melon is delicious. You can try some when it's done. All right, there are two types, sweet and savory. Which would you prefer? All right, you can try them both then. It's important that we remain calm, especially when we're in the throes of a tough situation like this. If I'm reading the situation correctly, there seems to be some secret here that the boss and I are not supposed to know about. But don't worry, I'll distract the boss while you discuss things with the others. Oh, I thought I smelled something cooking. Would you like some, Yenfei? Thank you, but I'm not hungry. You guys go ahead. Oh, and by the way, I haven't seen you in a while, Shinobu. Yeah, it has been a while, hasn't it? The last time I saw you was when you taught one of my classes as a substitute while I was studying in Liyue. Substitute teacher? Ah, yes, now I remember. It was during winter, wasn't it? Yes. I remember everyone said your lecture was very interesting. Now that I think about it, I should call you senpai. Ooh, I like the sound of that. <laughs> <sighs> Who would have ever guessed that we'd get caught up in such a dilemma together? It must be fate.
Not only that, she's funny and engaging while she speaks. Needless to say, she's very popular among the students. <laughs> oh, I'm flattered. <sighs> I see everyone is still here. Yelon, we split into groups and searched the area, but there are no signs of any way out. How about you? Did you manage to find anything? No. And, though I'd prefer not to say it, we'd better mentally prepare ourselves. If we can't find a way out, we may be stuck underground for some time. <sighs> I think you might be right. I understand. Hmm. An underground space with an entrance but no exit. It just doesn't make any sense. I'll figure something out. Just give me some time. If anyone happens to find a potential exit, please be sure to take every precaution before exploring further. Hey, Traveler! What's with the serious fi- Xiao! Oh, right! Sure! Let's give it a shot! Huh. Huh. No response. Paimon thought Xiao would come no matter where we are. Oh no, does that mean even Xiao can't sense our presence here? That's it. I want to take another look. And this time, I, Arataki, uh, the one and only, will... Boss! Whoa, whoa, what's up, Sourpuss? Time for some roasted lavender melon. Huh? We're trapped in a life-and-death situation underground, and you're telling me it's time for roasted lavender melon? <coughs> Interesting. You hear that? Ushi says you're completely right. Wait, hold on. Whose side are you on, Beefcake? <coughs> it's important to stay replenished. We must keep our energy and morale up in preparation for facing the unknown. Even Ushi knows that. Fine, you two are... Hey, are you already eating? Well, hold on, is it still warm? Oh, that does smell good. Hmm. Fine, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll just, we'll have a quick snack and then we'll, uh, and then we'll keep looking for a way out. Hey, don't eat them all, leave a couple for me! Hmm. <laughs> Who could have ever guessed we'd get trapped in a place like this? It's quite the predicament. For all the studying I've done in my life, all I know is how to land people in prison. I don't know the first thing about breaking out of one. I've even made a contract with my father to live a happy life. I can't give up hope now. Try and stay positive. At least I've explored a new place and seen more of the world while reuniting with some old friends. <laughs> yeah, there's still a silver lining, I guess. Our situation is grim. There doesn't appear to be a way out for now. We should be prepared to stay for a while. Fortunately, we don't seem to lack supplies, and even our motley crew has people who can keep their cool when the stakes are high. Just focus on taking care of yourselves. Oh. Basically, 
Paimon just wants out of here. Just a day? No, it feels like we've been down here for months. Uh, maybe not months, but at least like 20 days, surely. Yo, yo. Thought I heard you chatting over here. Oh, hey, Bullchucker. Well, everyone, I just completed another survey of the surrounding area. Still nothing has changed today. Here, have some water and take a rest. Thank you, Shinobu. <sighs> It's easy to forget to keep hydrated down here. Ugh, out! I want out! All I want is to cruise the streets and have beetle fights again. Boss, remember there's your image to consider. But it's so boring. Walking around this hole every day, I, if only I could slurp some ramen and see the beautiful flowers again. Ramen? Wait a minute. Speaking of ramen, Traveler, are you hungry? I'm not hungry either. But let me pose the question this way. Who is the biggest eater among us? It's definitely not me. Hey, what's everybody looking at me for? Well, it's definitely not me. If anyone, it's this one right here. Huh? Well, what are you looking at Paimon for? Paimon, are you hungry? Um, no. Paimon's not hungry. Why do you ask? Huh, <sighs> if that's the case... Huh? What, 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 what am I missing here? Yes, I heard that too, as I was walking over. The question is, how can you not feel hungry, even after 20 days? That's also strange. Of course, everyone has different perceptions of the passage of time, but how could one person feel like it's only been one day and someone else 20 days? Yeah, now that you mention it, I feel like we've been here three, four, five days, but I don't feel hungry or thirsty at all. Although I cooked some food, it wasn't because I was hungry. I just wanted to keep our spirits up. I was planning on saving our rations so we could survive a few more days, but I haven't really felt hungry since. Now that I think about it, not only am I not hungry, but I don't feel any real signs of fatigue either. Whether I sleep or not doesn't seem to have any effect on how I feel. Yes, I concur. Resting doesn't make me feel more refreshed, and staying awake doesn't make me any more tired. Very peculiar. It's almost as if our physical state has been suspended. Oh, the more you say, the scarier it sounds. Paimon doesn't even want to think about it. Huh? What's wrong, Traveler? Did you think of something? That's pretty weird. Sounds like the little dude must be in danger. But he is an Adeptus. This kind of situation should be no trouble for him. I fear that this problem underground is bigger than we thought. I found something, everyone. I just discovered a new path over there that seems to lead to an unknown area. You mean a way out? Oh, finally! Oh, please, please be the exit! I still suspect things can't be that simple. We should all stay prepared for whatever comes. Huh? Paimon doesn't see anything out of the ordinary here. Appearances can be deceiving. As I was examining the wall just now, I noticed there was something unusual about this stone. Seems to me that it's been created using some illusory magic. Hidden behind it lies a passageway. Gotta hand it to ya. That sure wasn't easy to find. But at least we can finally get out of here. Miss Yelon's determination and eye for detail are certainly impressive. Not to mention, you've hardly had any rest the whole time we've been trapped here. It doesn't matter. I'm not tired. <sighs> well, given we're already here, we might as well go in and explore. Right behind ya! Paimon can't wait to get out of this place!
What shall we do? You? Hey, did anyone else just hear that voice? It sounded super creepy. Some sort of battle taking place here? I wonder who could be involved. Why would you become like this? I won't attack you. That sounds like so. Can we be in trouble? Whoa, sounds like someone forgot to invite us to the fight. Let's go and help him. Yeah, but how are we gonna find him? Stabilize. Order guide you. Allow me. Flip it. 
The criteria for certificate exams are straightforward enough. What it really comes down to is whether you are willing to put in the time. If you study and practice, then it's really not all that difficult. If the Arataki gang stirs up any trouble, I'll drag every last one of them back to apologize. Solidify! Rest and leave it! Well... Helpful! Stand with me! Flicker!
The criteria for certificate exams are straightforward enough. What it really comes down to is whether you are willing to put in the time. If you study and practice, then it's really not all that difficult.
to another platform. Let's go and take a look. Little dude called Shao down there? We gotta help him. Hold on. Something's not right here. What's this? It appears to be a small fissure. What can you possibly find inside? It can't be a living person, can it? <laughs> <gasps> Conqueror of demons? Shao, is that you? Uh, oh, I quit trying to scare us, okay? Huh? Wait, is this some kind of illusion? Paimon can't touch him! Conqueror of Demons, can you hear us? Hello! Little dude! Anyone home? He isn't responding. What's going on here? You! Oh, he finally said something! Oh! We followed your voice and found you here, but it's kind of strange. We can't touch you. How did you become an illusion? <sighs> An illusion? Talk about a coincidence. We were just thinking you went missing and stuff, and then we heard the sound of you fighting. Pretty lucky we found you, if you ask me. <laughs> you didn't get hurt, did you? A coincidence? Wait, something's not right. <coughs> something's wrong with this domain. Leave now! Get out of there! If he can, we should have him regroup with us as soon as possible. Tell us what happened, and where you are now. We'll come find you immediately. No. Your safety is the top priority. It seems this space can... Huh? Where'd he go? It sounded like he might be injured. We need to go help him. It seems the only option we have to explore any further is through that entrance over there. Huh. He's injured and telling us to be careful? It's not like we're in any danger here. Anyway, the secret behind whatever's going on should be in this cave, right? Don't worry, little dude. Ito's on the way. Boss, please don't go charging ahead. You're an Oni, not some hunting dog. Don't worry, I'm invincible! Ah! Oh, my butt. <sighs> Looks pretty deep. Be careful, everyone. You can cry if it hurts. I promise I'll try not to laugh. What? What do you mean, try not to laugh? You should be feeling some serious sympathy for me right now. But wouldn't feeling sorry for you be a violation of your dignity? Besides, it's harder not to laugh when I'm not the one in pain. <laughs> Paimon, don't laugh. Okay, everybody. If you want to laugh at him, just let it out. Don't you have a heart, Shinobu? Oh, and people think I'm the monster. Wait a second. Shao's not here, but... Seems a little out of place here, don't you think? Maybe it's some sort of... Uh, I don't know, an emergency shelter? There was a picture book I read once that said nice people sometimes build cabins in dangerous places so that anyone in trouble can take shelter inside. Our little dude must be inside, then. Yeah! I wouldn't be too sure about that. Any person with a normal sense of danger wouldn't be so optimistic. Wow, Bullchucker! Looks like your subordinate is telling you what's what. Oh, I believe she was talking to both of us, yeah. So you can wipe that smug smile off your face. All right, watch and learn, Shinobu. This is why I'm the boss and you're the deputy. If no one is macho enough to open the door, then allow me! Step aside! 
Once this door's open, we are out of here. Evaloni, be gone! You heard me! Get out of here! Uh, am I seeing things? Or was there someone behind the door? Nah, can't be. You're just saying things. Why don't we just open the door again and see? Who? Uh, me? Oh, uh, <laughs> alright, uh, I'll open it again. All you do is goof around all day. You're a bad influence to our child. Be gone! <laughs> Those people are carrying bowls. Bowls full of beans. What's that all about? People throw beans to drive out Oni. Boss is an Oni, so they throw beans at him to get rid of him. Gave me the fright of my life! What are people from Inazuma doing in a place like this anyway? <laughs> Calm down now. You're a person from Inazuma too, you know. Hey, let's get one thing straight, all right? I'm not a person, I'm an Oni! Right, but that's not the point. The question is, does this door lead to Inazuma? Huh? How could that be possible? Ugh, oh, this place is so weird! Paimon- You guys go right ahead. I'm not opening it again. So, who's up? Oh, how about Paimon? Why don't you open it? No way! Somebody else do it! Paimon's scared! All right, I'll try. That's our Shinobu! Now, don't let whoever's behind that door push you around, okay? Alright. Let's see what's behind the door this time. Still reading, Shinobu. Listen, young lady. You should keep your nose out of those books and start taking my advice. I've already found you a perfectly good job as a Shrine Maiden at the Grand Narukami Shrine. You'll be far better off there than- <laughs> Uh, Shinobu? Who is that? No way! Was that who I think it was? Oh, this is embarrassing. That voice was my mother. This is one place I wasn't counting on having to hear that speech again. Your mother wanted you to become a Shrine Maiden? The whole reason I came to study in Liyue was because I didn't want to become a Shrine Maiden. My family never approved of my studies, so they wanted me to work in the Grand Narukami Shrine after I returned to Inazuma. From what we know about Lady Guji, it seems being a Shrine Maiden is a pretty cushy job. Think of it this way. Some cats can be domesticated and kept in the house, while other cats are meant to survive in the wild. As for me, I need complete freedom and space. Although I do admit that being a Shrine Maiden is a decent job, it's just not for me. That's right, your calling is with the gang. I mean, just look at you! You rock! You're totally hardcore! Come on, am I the only one with chills right now? It's true. You've got a good thing going. What's most important is that you enjoy what you do. Gotta agree with you there. From the look of it, what's behind the door can change. And not only that, it always changes to something that nobody wants to see. So, uh, how are we gonna get through that? And don't forget, we have that little dude waiting for us to save him. We need to get our rear in gear. Would any of you like to give it a try? Mm, no thanks. I'd prefer not to open it if only something terrible awaits. If anyone's going to find a way through, it's not going to be me. Uh, why? Because I don't buy it. That's why. I don't believe for one second that we're gonna find the Conqueror of Demons by going through that door. So I'm sure as heck not gonna be the one to get us through. Not gonna lie, uh, you don't really sound like you have much of an imagination. Alright. I'll try. Yeah! My savior! Show him what you're made of! I'm sure I probably do, but nothing springs to mind right- Anyway, I suppose I'll find out once I open the door. You old geezer. Out of eight pounds of salt, today you gave away three for free. 
sold two and exchanged three for booze. How much money did you actually make in the end? Huh? But didn't you tell me to sell things as I pleased? Why can't I give the customers something for free? You fool! You told the old man next door to come and fetch the salt. Well, he broke his leg on the way over, and now his son is asking for compensation. Seriously. <sighs> Huh. A civil dispute. Didn't see that coming. Who are they? <sighs> no one in particular, but it is a prime example of the many difficult civil cases that I've had trouble handling before. Hmm. So you mean you don't like handling disputes over petty matters? Not exactly. What I mean is that I don't like working with people who cannot let go of trivial grievances, especially of the kind you saw just now. They start with good intentions, but end up making a big fuss. It's not long before those good intentions plunge into injury and accidents. <sighs> it's always a shame. It's my desire to solve problems for people. That's why I became a legal advisor. It just seems that I still can't fully comprehend the complicated minds of some people. <sighs> I understand what you mean. The human mind is probably both the most complicated and tragic of things. I suppose there is no need to discuss this any further. Does anyone else want to try the door? Don't look at me. I told you, I'm not taking a chance with that thing. Come on, Yelon. We're a team here. If you're not gonna try, then at least give us a convincing reason why. <sighs> In that case, let me be perfectly clear. I serve Ningguang, the Tianxuan of the Qixing. The scope of my work includes some of Li Rei's biggest secrets. The chances are, if I open this door, there can be no witnesses left alive. Is that a sufficient reason for you? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, sounds, sounds impressive. Um, hey, Shinobu, uh, who's Ningguang? She's someone who won't let you walk out of the chasm alive if she finds out that you're prying into her secrets. Boss, you really do need to work on learning who's who in the world these days. Look, I knows what I needs to knows. It's called being a free Oni. Oh, now Paimon gets it. Yelan works for Ningguang. <laughs> yes, which is precisely why I was trying to keep her secret. <laughs> we should avoid letting Yelan open this door. What about you, Traveler? Would you like to try? Yeah, go for it, Traveler. Besides, you never know who could be behind that door. Maybe it could even be Shell. I say give it a shot. Who knows? Maybe little dude is waiting for us on the other side. So, wait. What's Paimon looking at? Find anything, Traveler? So, did you find the person we want to rescue inside? Judging by the look on your face, I'm guessing you saw something a little... unpleasant in there? Huh? How could that be? Ah, uh, don't worry. Paimon will keep searching for him with you. Cheer up! Uh, stupid door, I'll smash you to pieces! If Paima wasn't feeling so exhausted, she'd help out too. Hey, what is this? Nap time? <sighs> so let me get this straight. Not only did we not find Xiao through that door, we saw all the things that we wished to avoid. 
I'm starting to have a very ominous feeling about this domain. It's constantly changing, and its changes seem to be targeted at us. Huh? What do you mean? I feel the same way. We need to watch our every step. There is definitely more to this place than meets the eye. I concur. We came here following the Conqueror of Demons, but we ended up only finding a strange door. The things we've encountered on the other side of that door are equally strange. It shows us whatever we fear the most. We're in a space that defies common logic. <sighs> on top of that, I'm starting to feel tired after that experience. But I thought we'd establish that getting tired doesn't happen down here. The phenomenon hasn't reached a lethal stage just yet. Otherwise, we would have starved to death without eating for so long. I'm starting to worry that we're being affected by the changes in this space. In order to avoid the sudden accumulation of hunger and fatigue, we should eat and rest regularly from now on. <sighs> Paimon suddenly feels exhausted. It's really tiring going through all this. Now that you mention it, I'm starting to feel tired, too. <laughs> no, 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 it's all just an illusion! I will not let my mind play tricks on me. <sighs> Paimon's whole body just feels so heavy now. Hmm. According to the current evidence, it seems our physical condition was suspended in this space before, which granted us immunity to the effects of fatigue and hunger. And now it seems that mental fatigue is unavoidable. Though we have yet to locate the Conqueror of Demons, I suggest we go back and get some rest. It'll be difficult to rescue anyone if we're on the verge of collapse ourselves. She's right. Hey, Lavender Melon. You okay? Want me to carry you? You haven't slept at all. Are you sure you're okay? This place seems even more perilous than we first thought. Don't worry about me. Staying focused under pressure for as long as it takes is my specialty. Now, if I'm not mistaken, looks like you've got some new ideas. <laughs> How could you tell? It's my job to keep tabs on people. I figured as much. They're just preliminary ideas at this point. But I haven't completely thought them through yet. I'll tell you more once my ideas have taken shape. Sure. Sounds good. I also have some ideas of my own. I'll fill you in after I've confirmed some things. <laughs> you think so? As they say, two heads are always better than one. <laughs> 